Welcome back to What Arty Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the S-51, it's the Tier 7 Soviet SPG, and we're located on the north spawn of Lakeville. And the name of the commander is Michello. Now, that S-51 is carrying the 203mm B-4 howitzer. It's the big gun, capable of the huge amount of damage but it also means that he's not carrying very much in the way of ammo and he's elected to go behind the buildings is he going to move further yes he's moving further east along the uh, the map towards the town this is a standard battle but I suspect he's going to have a go at the uh, enemy tanks that are actually trying to defend uh, the uh, lake road and we've got a P-43 Biz going along that road to spot the enemy. Okay, he's loaded. He's got eight rounds of standard HE, four rounds of premium. Now it's got a very big footprint, the S-51, with the premium rounds. And with uh, the 203mm B-4, it can do an awful lot of damage. And, and it's well known for actually getting bombardiers on a regular basis. Okay, we've got an OI experimental making his way along the road and it's the worst possible thing you can take a heavy into there because he's just going to get pummeled to death. He's late, wait, waiting for the A to do, zero in. Now he's hiding behind that rock, but it's not going to stop him getting hit. He fires around it and wipes him out. One shot, 246 hit points. He was completely overwhelmed by that shot. Now he can't hit the valley from here, so he's going to have to move a bit closer. Now I should say that uh, I've seen a few arties firing from this little uh, L-shaped area here uh, next to the house. They think it's fairly safe, but I've actually blind shot and hit enemy arties hiding in that little park corral. So do be aware that it is a known arty firing position. And if you do go in there, there's a possibility you might get hit. Right, well, the S-51 is built on the chassis of the KV-1S. It's now in the valley. That Tiger-1 just went down. But an Su-85, and there's another tank hiding behind that rock. Uh, it's a Leopard, okay. And he will completely devastate that with 203mm. He's been dragged, round out, kills it straight away. 132 uh, hit points. And his second kill of the game. And he's relocating. Yes, unfortunately, they uh, they had some they built some prototypes to test the uh, the design of putting a, a 203mm howitzer on a uh, KV-1S chassis. But the chassis was so light and so uh, poorly constructed, it just couldn't take the, the punishment of the... Uh, uh, the stress it was put under by the gun uh, and it would shake the chassis to pieces so uh, it was no use as an arty and they didn't put in production after that they just kept testing it to see because they wanted to see if they could use kb1s chassis but i'm um, afraid it was just no good now he's trying to see if he can get um a spot at them. He was using, holding down his right hand mouse button to hold the aim on the church area because he thought that there's something might appear there. But he's now spotted that KV-85 coming up on the KV-3 and the KV-1. They're being attacked on both sides. He can hit, certainly hit the P-43. And if he does, actually, he'll probably splash it to death. Round out. Oh, well, he got both of them. He got the 3002 and the P-43 Biz, who's subsequently been killed. So he picked up the stun assist. We lost the uh, KV-1, I'm afraid. And that KV-3 is taking fire. I think that was actually from the uh, 3002 there, who ducked into cover. Now he's pulling back. He doesn't want to face two enemies at once. The KV-85, if he's got the upgraded turret, is uh, is very much like an IS. So he doesn't really want to get uh, hit by that too often with that big gun that it carries. Could be quite deadly. And that 3002 is taking an occasional pot shot at the KV-3. He was a bit of a novice, so he's hiding behind the house. And that might... Oh, he's been hit by the enemy RT. We've lost sight of the 3002. The SU-85 is moving up. 
Now he might spot him. There he is. He's found him. And yeah, he puts a shot into the 3002, but the 3002 kills the SU-85. And Michello's trying to get a shot on that 3002, but he can't because the buildings are just too narrow together. And from the angle he's firing, he just can't do it. He's just too far away, really. But he can hit the M4 now, who's come out to the open, fires a round in. And he does! He splashes the M4 to death. That's that big footprint I was saying about earlier of the... Uh, of the B4 cannon. It really has got a very, very deadly splash radius. And if you get two tanks together, it can easily take out both of them if they're both weakened. Okay, 3002 has gone up to the uh, top. Right. Now, is he? Is there anybody up there with him? KV, uh, KV3 is going after the 3002, trying to chase him down. He's got more hit points, but there's an ELC up there as well. And if the two of those, the ELC and the 3002, get together, that KV-3 is going to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, he's taking fire, but it's actually from the enemy arty. He's in the open, you see. There's the ELC. Okay, he's, he's a little close to the lake. It did look as if he was looking for the KV-3, but he's splashed to death! And taken out by Michello. Good shot. He waited for him to, to come to an open area on that road and then took him out the game. You can see that the reload time of the B4 howitzer is actually quite long. 43.2 seconds. But that's more than compensated for by the fact that it can actually do a lot more damage. Now he's got seven rounds left. He's got four kills already. And there's the 3002. And he could be kill number five if he can get this right. Dialed in. And that should be it. Round out. And he does. He gets him. So that's kill number five. I don't think we've got anybody to worry about coming through the valley. Even though there's an 82 supposedly there, I think they're being held back by the T-3485 and the T-67. Plus, of course, they've got the backup of an M41 and an SU-8. Now, 88 has been seen in the town. Now, can he hit that? Just. It's going to be a difficult shot. It's over the top of that house. I think he's going to try and splash it from behind. Now, we've lost sight of him temporarily. He's holding his right-hand mouse button down to have a quick look. Now, having another quick look in the valley. Two tanks have been seen, the 82. And I think he's going to shoot over here now because he's let the released his right-hand mouse key. Going for the poodle first. Fires it in. And big hit. Looked like he got 366 hit points on the Poodle and 78 on the uh, on the 82 at the same time with the splash. And the I think, think the SU So the danger in the valley is now the Poodle only and the T3485 is going in to try and get the kill. And unfortunately, we lost the T3485. The Poodle was quick on the mark and he managed to get the shot off to kill the T-3485. Now, the big threat is now from the enemy RT, because there's three of them. And also from the AT-8 who's still in the town and that KV-3 is still trying to kill him. Oh, we lost the KV-3. So it's now five against three. This is going to put the pressure on uh, the last remaining tank destroyer, which is a T-67. But the T-67 is rather OP at Tier 5. But this is a Tier 7 game. So he's got tougher armor to get through. And that 88 has got very tough armor. Well, he saw some damage there. And he took out the 88. He knew that the 88 was there by the damage being done as he moved through the town. And he fired a shot in there and got him. Splashed him to death. So he's got four rounds of premium ammo. He's reloading. 
He's got one medium tank to kill, the Poodle, who's been badly damaged, and the Splash will probably kill, and three Arties. And thankfully, he's still got the SU-8, who's actually quite a good shot. He's got one kill. Of course, the S-51 by Magello has got a top gun. Now, try to work out where the enemy art is likely to be. Can we see the tracer? I think it's a fairly good bet that one of them is going to be near the town. Because they're going to be expecting somebody to come down the valley. The poodle pulled back. I think he kno the poodle knows the T-67 is there. And T-67 is now going to poking up. So he's going to have a look and see if there's anybody on the other side of the valley. So now would be a good time to be looking at the valley. Now for some reason, Machado's distracted. He's just looking at the water um, or looking for damage in the town centre. Looking for any sign that the enemy are here moving towards our cap through the town. No. Nope. T-67 hasn't spotted the uh, Boodle yet, so he's moving down into the enemy area. So, Michello's now following him. Okay, he's brought his aim around. You can see the S-51's got quite a narrow arc of fire. That does make a bit of a problem with Reticule Bloom. But if you're a practice player, and I think Michello is a practice player, um, he, does, he will aim fairly quickly. There's the enemy 15550, the tier 7. Dialing in and... Oh, he's killed by the T-67. He allowed the T-67 to take the kill there to save his ammunition for the Poodle. And there's the AMX-13. Oh, the AMX-13 was smart enough to take out the uh, T-67. But will he avoid the B-4 shell? No, I don't think he will. No, he doesn't. That's a one-shot kill. 220 hit points. And he's out the game, but it means it's now two RTs versus a medium and an RT. And the SU-8, he's in the distance, he's already moving. He's going to cap at the other end. Of course, that Poodle is very badly damaged, so a splash kill is more that's needed to take him out the game. And the SU-8 was manoeuvring around those wrecks. Michello's now up to seven kills. If he can get one more, he will get a Radley Waters. And I'm wondering what he's going to do. Is he going to defend his own cap? Yes, he is. So somebody is in the cap. Now, is that the RT? Which is an M44. Or is it the Poodle? Well, if it's the Poodle, it should be a lot easier to kill than the M44. The M44 is actually quite a dangerous uh, RT. With 155 millimeter howitzer, it's the RT that most people prefer. And there's the M44. So it must be the poodle in the cap, and the M44 must have seen him, but no six sense has gone off. There's the poodle. Dialing in, and he's got a red line. Oh, he's taken a hit. He's taken a hit. Ouch. And another. You need to be careful. Otherwise, you're going to lose this. And he shotguns the poodle. 88 hit points. Gets his Radley Walters. But now he's vulnerable to that M44. Because he's got a long reload. But the M44's got a fast reload. 16 seconds if he's uh, fully loaded. And there's the M44 trying to come in for the kill. Oh, he got it. And the SU-8's coming up on the M44. And now the M44's in trouble. And look at that. Now the SU-8 can ram kill the M44. And I think that's exactly what he's going to do. Or is he know he's going to try and drive behind him and shoot him in the ass. Now they're both reloading as quickly as they can. But the M44 has got a faster reload than the SU-8. But I think the M44 has realised now he's not going to get away. The SU-8 is going to get him. And he does. And that's a win for their team.
Oh, so, so annoying that M44 was quick enough to get around behind Michello and shoot him in the rear uh, just as he was trying to climb up onto that rock. It might have been actually easier to drive straight forward, but I know, he obviously uh, did think that maybe that M44 was covering that pass just in case he moved forward. But I thought it was a reasonable bet that the M44 would have come up behind him. So let's have a look at the end of battle stats. And it's a first-class tanker for Marcello in the S51. He also picked up a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 18. And he got a Radley Walters for getting at least eight kills. Uh, and he used a lot of his shells in that in doing that. But uh, all that was very frightening towards the end when the Poodles started putting rounds into him. Uh, he also picked up a Top Gun for getting at least six kills. So let's have a look at the uh, team scores. Well, he managed to get the uh, uh, second place with damage with 2,257 hit points. The KV-3 managed to get the high caliber. Uh, he did 2,970. Um, but Marcello managed to get the highest number of kills, 8. And when it came to base XP, he was actually uh, uh, second with 1,059. The SU-8 uh, was still alive, managed to get 525. And of course, two kills, including the M44. So if we have a look at the detailed report, well, he fired 10 rounds uh, out of his 12 round uh, magazine. Uh, he got four direct hits, four penetration and nine splash. Just goes to show, you see, that uh, this thing will splash more than one tank at once. And on several occasions, on several of his shots, even though he only fired 10 shots, he actually did splash, if you look at that, um, more tanks with each shot, um, or at least more than one occasion. In fact, I think on two occasions uh, I, I, that I recall of, once in the valley and once in the town, he did damage of 2,257 hit points, of which 2,163 were at more than 300 meters. Obviously, the poodle was a lot closer when he shot him. Uh, he received three hits, three penetrations. One was from the, uh, two was from the poodle, and one was from the uh, M44. I'm afraid. He received also one hit as a result of splash damage, and that was from the M44. Um, so he spotted one enemy vehicle. That was the M44. Uh, he damaged 11 of the enemy, that's more than two-thirds of the enemy team, and killed eight of them. He also did damage assistance, or stun assistance, sorry, rather I should say, of 381 hit points of five stuns. On a premium account, he earned 41,817 credits, and after repair and ammunition resupply, he had 5,912 credits left over. And the reason this is so high is because the B4 howitzer, especially the premium rounds on the B4 howitzer, are very expensive, and uh, that's why his ammunition costs are higher than usual. He received 1,589 XP, but it was times two for the first victory of the day. And he had a personal reserves bonus going for 13589 for 100%. So he actually took away 4,767 XP altogether. But a uh, really good display of how the 203mm howitzer on the B4 uh, cannon, of the B4 cannon, on the S51 can be so effective. So congratulations, Michello. You didn't survive the battle, but you did bring about the victory for your team, and you certainly carried them with eight kills. So if you like this replay, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel, and hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in the next video.